Can the Dallas Cowboys finally snap this losing streak? Or will it be the Detroit Lions finally winning in Dallas? All that and more in this crossover edition of the Locked On Lions, Locked On Cowboys podcast. You are Locked On Cowboys, your locked daily Dallas Cowboys on. podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast locked Network, your on. team locked every locked day. Locked On. Locked, locked, locked On. Locked On Cowboys. Locked On Cowboys. Welcome back to this crossover edition of the Locked On Lions and Locked On Cowboys podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. We'd like to thank you for making us your first listen of the day. This crossover Thursday this episode is brought to you by Price Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to pricepicks.com slash NFL and use promo code LOCKDOWNNFL for a first deposit match up to $100. I am your host, Marcus Mosier. You can follow me on Twitter at Marcus underscore Mosier. Joining me today for this crossover edition of the Lot on Lions, Lot on Cowboys podcast is Matt Derry from Lot on Lions. Check him out on Twitter at Derry Speaks. Matt, first of all, what a season this Lions team is having. It's it's gotta be <laughs> this has got to be the most fun that you've ever had covering a football team. Is that right? It's pretty crazy, Marcus. Obviously, uh, you got the same phone call I got many years ago from David Locke. Mine goes back 2016 to to host this podcast and to be a part of of kind of the Lions fandom each and every day and bring people content. But even through a couple of those Jim Caldwell seasons, which were solid, some playoff appearances, nothing like this. 11 wins, uh, NFC North champions, and really the the, the storyline for the Lions is coming off of this emotional high from last weekend in Minnesota, knocking off the Vikings on the road to be division champions. How will the team bounce back and be able to play a football game? We're already, and I mentioned this on yesterday on what Tuesday show, six point underdogs in Dallas. Many people may be saying, ah, oh, you know, the lion story is cute. They're good. They're winning the division, all that, but can they go down to Dallas and beat the big bad Cowboys? But right now, yes, the city's going crazy. There's going to be a home playoff game at Ford field in a few weeks. And uh, people just cannot believe it. So I want to talk about the biggest storylines for the Cowboys and the Lions going into this game. But just really quickly from the Cowboys side of things, this is a big game because it's a nationally televised game. It's a Saturday night game. In all likelihood, this is probably the last home game that they're going to have all year. And then on top of that, Jimmy Johnson is going to be inducted into the Ring of Honor. So that's a big deal. But for the Lions, they've already won the NFC North. What is their motivation going into this game? Well, I want to get back to the Cowboys for a sec, Marcus. Tell me, two straight losses, obviously playing two good teams in Buffalo and Miami, but I know, and, and, and I, I sometimes tune into Dan McDowell's a podcast down there, uh, the legendary host in Dallas, but it just seems like, man, the Cowboys were cruising, winning like five, six in a row. And these last two weeks, it's got to be panic right now. And But they can still win the division, and they can still show at least this weekend against the Lions that they're a legit contender. But, man, what a roller coaster the last few weeks, right? Yes and no. I mean, these are both games that the Cowboys were projected to lose. They were underdogs in both games. They were road games against two, I mean, what, two of the three best AFC teams probably in the Bills and the Dolphins. Right. I, I think there's some disappointment, but I don't think there's panic. I don't think a two-point loss to the Dolphins in a game that you Cowboys might have been able to win. I don't think people are very upset about that. But – I will say, if the Cowboys were to go and lose this game against the Lions at home, that's when we're starting to have conversations like, oh, maybe this team isn't quite as good or as talented as we thought you know, on Thanksgiving because that would be three straight losses against three playoff caliber teams. Yeah. I, I look at the Lions and I see a team that maybe has something to prove this week because some people will say, well, listen, uh, you know, there are four losses. Um, Losing to the Ravens, who are they're, they're a Super Bowl contender, it was an ugly loss. They looked bad doing it. Uh, you know, the Bears' loss was a few weeks ago, and it was just kind of a, a stub your toe type of situation. It was not a good performance in the Lions. But like you look at Detroit's schedule, you see the weakness and the weak spot of the NFC North. Uh, you know, Lions lost to Green Bay once, they lost to the Bears once. But you know, Dallas has a cachet, and I know you know this hosting the show every day on Locked On Cowboys. There's a cachet. To go into Big D, to go into Jerry World and win would be some kind of a statement. And I know this. If there's a team 
that is not going to let down despite winning the division, despite getting a lot of national love this week, it's the Lions. I think Dan Campbell, and he said this on his uh, at his Wednesday press conference, Campbell said it. Look, we won the division. That was our goal. Now we want to get that two seed and have an opportunity to host two home games, not just one, but two. And I think that the team will be focused enough to do that. The question is, Dallas has a very good offense. Obviously, Dak Prescott and that offense at home are very, very good at 7-0. and And do the Lions have enough with the pass rush and with that secondary to, to slow down what Dak and company are doing, especially in the passing game? And I want to talk about the Cowboys defense really quickly to kind of just tie that back in. Since week 13, the Cowboys defense has really struggled. They're 30th in EPA per play. They're 30th in EPA per run. I mean, they just have really struggled against some better offenses against Buffalo, Seattle, Mm -hmm. Philly, uh, Miami. You're playing one of the best offenses in the league here in week 17 in an offense that you might have to face at some point in the playoffs. How do you match up against Amon Ross St. Brown? How do you match up against Sam Laporta? And what do you do against this run game that is so dynamic with their two running backs? I think after the Cowboys have had four pretty poor showings on the defensive side of the ball, I'm curious to see what kind of answers Dan Quinn has in this game because they really haven't been tested like this with a team that can run the ball and pass it as well as Detroit can. I'm fascinated to see what that side of the ball looks like. Yeah, that's the worry for me, Uh, Marcus. You bring up a great point is uh, when it comes to the Lions, they've done a very good job, very good job of protecting Jared Goff over the last few weeks. The Bears game notwithstanding where Chicago and Montez Sweat and that group got a a lot of heat on Goff. It was cold weather in Chicago. The fans were into it, and it just wasn't the best day for the Lions. But since Frank Ragnow has come back, their Pro Bowl center, that offensive line with Decker, with Jackson, with Ragnow, Glasgow, and Sewell, has been pretty dominant, and Goff has remained clean. You mentioned the run game, but Micah Parsons and the Cowboys complaining, putting in in some requests to the league, watch the tape. Micah's being held. National TV, like you said, Saturday night. Um, I just have a feeling we're going to get some, I'm not going to say phantom calls, but I think the Cowboys are going to get a good whistle, and I I worry that the Lions are going to have a little bit of a letdown coming off of that game, even though that a Dan Campbell coach team shouldn't let down. And they're going to stay focused. But I do believe that pocket will not be as clean with the Lawrences, the Parsonses of the world getting a, getting in Goff's face. And I think it could be, a, I'm not going to say a long evening for the Lions, but I think it could, could spell a little bit of trouble. Because like you said, the Cowboy defense under Dan Quinn is due to have a good game. Uh, we're going to talk about Micah Parsons and Penny Suell in, in just a second, because that's obviously one of the biggest matchups to watch in this game. But I do agree with you on the whistles. Uh, Micah Parsons has now gone 40 quarters, 40 quarters without drawing a holding call. Wow. I just got a, a, a sneaky suspicion after so much <laughs> national attention and so many people posting about it that we're probably going to get like a first quarter holding call. That's maybe a little, uh, maybe a little soft, just, just throwing that out there. So you guys, I don't disagree. I don't, he, he is, he is a special talent. Ironically going up against Penisul. Remember the Lions drafted Penisul ahead of Micah Parsons. Yes. Could have had Parsons. And there are some that will say, well, how can the Lions pass on Parsons? He's a he's a freak of nature. Penisul is what PFF is grading him out as the best tackle in the league right now. He's been fantastic for this team. So I think both teams made out pretty well yes. in that draft a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, the Cowboys had the same situation play out in 2011. They passed on J.J. Watt to draft Tyron Smith. Worked out pretty good for both parties. Uh, Matt, let's talk about some matchups that we are really interested to watch on Saturday night. We will get to that next. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the largest daily fantasy sports platform in North America. It is the easiest and most exciting way to play DFS because it's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, All you have to do is pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Prize picks is the most fun that I've had playing DFS because I love how many different players and how many different stat projections that you can choose from. It's absolutely incredible. Plus, Prize picks even offers a reboot policy so that your entries stay in play, even if one of your players gets injured. For football and basketball games, if you have a player who exits the game in the first half and does not return for the second, that player is rebooted. 